Weapons are cool and all, but are they really necessary? I mean, tools deal damage, so couldn't we just save some time by using tools to damage enemies instead? Well, today we're going to find out. Oh, and in master mode. There are two major drawbacks to using tools. For starters, our range is very limited, as just about every tool lacks a projectile or long-range attack. Additionally, our damage output leaves a lot to be desired. Also, I believe we get an upgrade here. Nine damage? Okay. Clearly this wasn't gonna cut it for Master of Bosses. So we set our sights on the Rockfish. At 24 base melee damage, this hammer is easily the most powerful tool available to us. And while we can't exactly solve the lack of range problem, we can boost her damage even further. Since we're effectively playing a watered down true melee build, melee speed is super important. Luckily for us, melee speed buffs still affect our tools. So I went ahead and obtained the Pharaoh Claws. And with that, we're ready to do some boss fights. Now while King Slime doesn't have a lot going for it, what it does have is contact damage. This thing deals 96 damage on it. That's just nine less damage than Skeletron's spinning move. <laughs> Pair that with our terrible range, and this fight becomes much more difficult than I initially thought it would be. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chill, 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 chill. <laughs> Ow. Hey, there we go. After defeating King Slime, the goblins decided it was time to invade. Now, usually this isn't a big deal, but uh, in this run, we have no pierce damage, short range, low knockback, and low damage. So we died a lot. But eventually we made it through and found a Goblin Tinkerer. Since we still can't upgrade our weapon for a while, we went straight into the next boss fight after some quick reforges. I've done this fight with True Melee once before, and let me tell you, this was just as awkward as I remember it being. The whole time you have to space just barely outside of his range to deal damage without getting too close and take damage yourself. Now I'm sure there's a way to do this reliably, but this method felt super strange to me. That being said, at this point in the game, I had acquired quite a lot of defense points, so despite all of this, we took it out just fine. Next up is Deerclops, and, well, it is over 15,000 health. This fight takes a long time in a normal playthrough, so you can imagine how brutal this will be with just a rockfish. Oh, we've done no damage. I didn't realize how little we were doing. Chat, this ain't looking good. Our buffs are gonna run out. So sorry for everyone that was believing. All right, this is working now. If we can, oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's totally okay. That, on the other hand, is not. Nope. Hold on, I have an idea. Run away <laughs> and regen. Ow! Oh shit! Oh, it's backfiring, chat. It's backfiring. <laughs> oh, run, run. Run, 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 run. Rebuff. Run away! <laughs> run away! <laughs> You're dead. Easy. Easy dub. Easy dub. <laughs> Easy. There we go, chat. Oh! First try. Alright, chat. We win. We won the game. We have officially won the game. Look at this thing. Look at this. This isn't even with, like, optimal reforge. This thing's broken. Broken. While we did just receive a major upgrade to our toolkit, the Eater of Worlds still seemed pretty daunting. Normally for this fight, I kite the Eater across the biome and use a piercing weapon to stunlock and kill it. But we don't really have that option here. Now if you're anything like my Twitch chat, you might have recommended using bombs or traps at this point. So now might be a good time to clarify the rules of this challenge. I decided that anything on the tools wiki page is fair game for dealing damage to enemies, barring the flare gun and dice rod because I felt they go against the tools only playstyle. Since bombs, grenades, and dynamite are absent from this list, we can't use them to deal damage. So I pretty much just winged this fight and hoped it would all work out. All right, we're just gonna damage some of the segments here. Don't wanna actually kill any yet. I wanna split it off, because that's bad news. Uh, do we just say screw it and start hitting things? I think mean, we just say screw it and start hitting things, because there's no way I can avoid splitting these off. Oh, this is gonna be so bad. <laughs> run, 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 run. <laughs> Ow, that did so much. No, no. We're close, we're close, we're close. We do this, we do this. No, my dash. <sighs> oh no, 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 no. Bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. Run, run. Whew. 
Whoa, what? What was that? It was like the... the <laughs> we got their like cousin here helping them out. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> no sun. Oh, that did 69 damage. What? Why does that do more than the boss? <laughs> what the hell? That's not okay. Okay, I need to chill. There's literally two... <gasps> This is not okay. Oh! Oh my god! That was stressful. Alright, well we did it. First try too. Okay, well let's get the armor, I guess. Oh, and while we're crafting the new armor set here, if you guys have been enjoying the video so far, consider subscribing. I do tons of turret challenges just like this one. Next up is Queen Bee, which gets a ton of defense as the boss fight progresses. To counteract this, we'll be using the sharpening station. While the tooltip only specifies that it affects melee weapons, it works just fine with tools. While Queen Bee is usually fairly difficult, it was actually pretty easy thanks to Lucy and the Shield of Cthulhu. One super helpful buff for melee builds are the various flasks that you can apply to your weapon. Fortunately for us, they can be applied to tools, so I made some fire ones to help supplement our damage against Skeletron. Skeletron, spawned. Ooh. Ooh, I like the, uh... I like this. I like the flask here. Uh, okay, hands are dealing damage. I've never tried to, like... Hit the uh, hands with melee before. <laughs> this is kind of weird. I'm gonna have to position accordingly. Oh, look at that. Huge damage. Alright, there we go. This is so hard and scary. Oh my god. How do I do this? This is actually gonna be so hard. If I mess up, even just a little bit, it's over. I'll get decimated. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try the, the shield bounce against it this time. It might, we might lose, but it's for science. Shield bounce incoming. Oh, that works. Oh, that works really well, okay. All right, we found it, we found the strap. There we are, we did it, nice. Before we take on Wallflesh, we'll be needing a way to outrun the boss. So I decided to get the golf cart. While the horses do travel faster, the golf cart perfectly matches the speed of Wallflesh in its final phase, which makes spacing much easier. And I mean, come on, it's a golf cart. After crafting molten armor and preparing a bridge, we went into our first attempt. Hungry are pretty easy to kill with the, the knockback. That's actually really good. Uh, how much damage do they do to us? A decent amount. Ram nine reach. I think I can, yeah. Okay, this is doable. Right now, anyways. <laughs> we'll see if I still hold that same opinion later. Oh, 130. <gasps> 135. <laughs> the problem is every time I get the dip for the health, they the hungry return. Which is super bad. Alright, we're going back. Yeah, we're dead. It became clear that reaching hard mode would be no easy task. The biggest obstacle in this fight are by far the hungry, because as the fight progresses, they deal more and more damage. They also respawn, so they're a constant threat throughout the fight. And of course, if we mess up our spacing and get hit by the wall itself, it's very bad news. To try and mitigate this, I switched my reforges to warding and gave it another go. Well, we did a little better here, we're still nowhere near taking this thing down. Over the next few attempts, I added heart statues, the stinger necklace, and even tried out the reaver shark in the hopes that the increased range would help keep the hungry at bay. But even after all of that, we barely took this thing down to have health. Funnily enough, the answer to breaking the 50% health barrier had been in our inventory this whole time. Unlike Lucy and the reaver shark, the rockfish doesn't turn your character around when you start moving in the opposite direction. By using the rockfish, we can throw out a constant hitbox facing the boss while running away. Okay, it's getting fast. It's getting speedy. This attempt's looking really good, though. It's a lot easier to deal with the hungry at this point. But they do so much damage! Oh, that's so good, though. We got so far. I just gotta watch my health. Okay, 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 okay. This is doable. Over the next couple attempts, I kept adding minor optimizations to our build and slowly started to get the hang of the strategy. Nope. Ah, two hit. Oh, damn it. We got so close. Not doing any damage. I can't get close enough. 
I can't get close, chat. What do I do? We got so close. But it seemed as though we had reached a new barrier, and this time around, I wasn't even sure if it would be possible to break it. But then we found the answer. For most of these attempts, I've been using the Stinger Necklace for its passive honey buff after taking damage. However, in addition to the honey buff, it also releases bees. Now, you don't really notice them all that much because regular bees aren't that great in master mode. However, when buffed with the hive pack, they become considerably stronger. So much so that they might just be the final piece of the puzzle. I think our damage has gone way up, right? Pretty sure. Oh yeah, those lasers are packing a bunch here. But it's especially bad when the hungry hit us. Now they're dying a lot faster because of the bees. Come on. Come on. This is easily the first we've gotten. I'm gonna have to look at the health bar to know. Come on. Come on. I'm going full speed, chat. This is as fast as we go. I gotta get a little closer so the rockfish hits. I can't hit it! Yes! <laughs> we did it, the bees! The bees! Yes, that took so long. That's the gatekeeper of this game, of this of this challenge. We beat what can easily be described as the hardest boss of this challenge. But we'll see, we'll see. We, we've yet to see what's <laughs> what's coming, so who knows? 